So that's square from this corner to that corner, that corner to that corner, which means I'm good to start coming across evenly. Beautiful morning. This is the time of year that I can start really making progress and that I really enjoy working in the forest. Our average temperature is about 23, 24 degrees Celsius uh, during the day at the, for a high and then overnight it's down to like 10, 11, 12, 13. So absolutely perfect working conditions and I am making progress. But not only that, I feel a lot more motivated getting to this stage and this really feels like a significant milestone getting this roof framed in. And I think what I'm going to try to get done today is finish framing the entire side. So I'll have the rafters standing out over the back overhang as well as over the front porch. And then uh, start boarding this. I've got probably enough 1x6 that's uh, fairly dry even. That I can probably get at least this side boarded in. All the way across over the extent, over the overhang. And out like past that beam probably over the kitchen and that would allow me to waterproof this section and uh, hook up the wood stove get this chimney pipe in and leave it installed and sort of work around it up there I kind of need to do that anyway so um, I flash the cone in with the waterproofing membrane now this to me seems like a major milestone to get this roof rafters almost done on this side so anyway, I think about three days to get the roof completely framed in and boarded. And then I think what I'm going to do is just put a membrane on it, like I do on a lot of the buildings. Just put a waterproof membrane and then figure out exactly what roof system, final roof system I'm doing. Still going back and forth, but I, I'm leaning more towards a metal roof on this one, uh, mainly because this is a coniferous forest, a lot higher chance of forest fire here and just having that metal on the roof is another layer of uh, protection so if sparks land on it you know if it was wood for example that could easily catch especially cedar shakes so I'm leaning towards metal but like I said membrane at first and then decide if I'm going to try to get that on before the winter problem is I have a couple of additions to do first of all there's this breezeway right here which right now I have a flat roof on it the plan eventually is to have a sloped roof going this way. So opposite, perpendicular to that roof there. Which means I'm going to have a hip come in. Or, you know, I'm going to have a ridge come in to the top and then two valleys coming off. Shedding the snow basically to around here on this side and same on the other side. Um, but the problem is this is stick framed vertically right down to the foundation. Got that uh, six by eight timber uh, basement um, so footings and then basement walls and then this is two by six a traditional stick frame wood on vertical like that wood does not shrink very much this way it shrinks this way so these logs are going to shrink and this cabin is probably going to settle anywhere between, I don't know, six and maybe even nine inches. No, probably six inches total. It's going to compress and shrink and just settle six inches lower than the, that peak right now. So what happens is this is going to slide down, which is why I've got this addition grooved into that wall and not fastened anywhere. So it's, this cabin's literally going to sink and this is going to stay exactly where it is and then I have an outdoor kitchen I'm going to actually get the footings in or the posts uh, before winter so that I can work on it over the winter um, so that's going to go right here roughly not sure the size but roughly like, let's say 16 or 15 by 15 16 by 16 so that's going to have another roof pitch going this way so I'm going to have all these roof pitches tying into each other and I want to make sure that I'm that I'm either allowing for that settling or that I've allowed everything to settle too close to its final position before I do the metal roof. And then on the back side, I have a bedroom addition going on. And I'm not sure how I'm doing that roof yet either. It could either be another gable coming off this way perpendicular or it could be just a shallower sloped shed roof off, off this slope. So again, 
Um, I have to make those decisions and then again decide how I'm going to tie those roofs in to make sure they're, they're watertight. The most typical failure point of any roof is the transitions. So this flat roof, for example, this winter is going to hold a lot of snow. As that melts, because the wood stove's right there, a lot of heat in this section of the cabin, this is going to continue to melt, slide down, and then freeze on top of here. So there's a real risk of ice backup. So what I need to do is put a, a flat membrane roof on here that runs really far up onto that roof. And maybe for this winter, if it stays membrane, it's just like a monolithic roof system that continues everywhere. So there's no joints for it to back up and go under. And I would do that with like an ice and water sh shield or an EPDM rubber or something. Something that's going to either seal itself really well in those joints so they become essentially one product of one membrane uh, with no joint that can leak or uh, a larger sheet that can actually go straight up with no seams with knowing that here at that transition as the settling occurs you're going to get some um, bunching up and um, sort of folds and stuff there so I'm going to have to not adhere that to the vertical part so that it can do that so lots to think about uh, the other thing is these boards right here the first uh, from the eave up i'm not sure how many boards four or five of them i didn't fasten those down yet because i need to insulate in that channel that's on top of this wall here the one that runs this way i have the two two by eights running up like this and there's a cavity in there that if i just board that over it's never going to be insulated so the cold air can get in here and the warm air can come in from the outside get into that cavity from the inside and that can cause some condensation or a place for for uh, like mice and bugs and stuff to nest so i have to take care of that before i fasten the boards down so i'll do that on all four sides like one two three four it's a two by two by eight i'm going to fully insulate that cavity so it's what's called a hot roof so the interior air comes up and meets that insulated space. There's no air getting in there. There's no air in that cavity because it's going to be fully insulated. And then the cold comes down from the top side. So, you know, the reason I'm saying that, a typical roof, you would have some venting in the soffit, venting at the eave, and air traveling through that, and then your insulation would be below that. Um, especially if you had like a flat roof in there, or a flat ceiling that would be insulated and then there'd be this big cavity above it that gets hot in the summer and cold in the winter because it has that ventilation. It actually makes the roof last longer too. Um, so what I'll do if I end up doing a metal roof is strap this. So first vertically so that any water that gets in can shed out and then horizontally on top of that like three quarter inch and three quarter inch or half inch. And uh, that'll create a little bit of an air gap in there between the membrane and the metal so that the sun beating down on that metal doesn't heat it up and then transfer it to directly into the roof cavity and heat that up as well so it, it uh, really helps in the summer but it also helps the roofing material last longer so that's the it i think for logs for this oh no <laughs> i have the front porch to do i have a lot of log framing to do for the uprights to hold that big overhang. I could leave it like that, but over time that's gonna start sagging, especially in the winter when I get all that snow weight on there. Um, it's 80 plus inches overhanging right from the outside to the to the outside of the overhang. So from that cabin gable to the overhang over the porch, it's at least 80 inches. Um, so that could start sagging. So I have to put some uprights and you know the typical framing that you see on uh, cabin gables to hold that up. I'll be doing that. I'm not going to rush, I don't think, to do it. Although I'm going to do it before winter or at the beginning of the winter. But my priority is to get the full cabin footprint completely watertight. So I can get all the stuff cleared out of here. I can get a wood stove put into the basement to dry any, any uh, moisture out that's down there. Um, treat any mold if anything's grown and just start drying out the cabin get the windows in get the doors in and start sleeping in here cooking all my meals and everything so finally finally at that point and then i need to get the cellar finished because uh potatoes the 
potato plants are starting to die back, which means they're ready for harvest or almost ready for harvest. I need to take those, dig those up, get them uh, cured on you know shady spot, cool spot, and uh, get those stored in the cellar. So that's got to be done by September. So get some st a staircase down there, get that fully inside in the basement as well. Lots and lots to do. I can't believe it's this time of year already. But anyway, I'm glad that this phase is done. The the bulk of the wall building and the cellar and all the you know foundation and everything, and I can start moving into the inside which is to me the more exciting part start living the, the cabin life again i think that's it so thanks for watching appreciate it and i look forward to seeing you back at the cabin next time take care